Hello everyone and welcome back to Unbound Learners Pre-K. My name is Nina. What's your name? It's nice to meet you. Let's sing our good morning song together. Stretch your arms out like airplane wings and let's fly to one side, fly over to the other side, fly back to the middle and take your airplane wings into a big circle out in front of you like this. Next, bring the circle up over your head and let's stretch on this side. We'll stretch over to that side and one last stretch up at the top. Let's bring the circle down and sing together. Good morning, dear earth. Good morning, dear sun. Good morning, dear rocks and flowers, everyone. Good morning, dear beast and birds in the trees. Good morning to you and good morning to me. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to circle time. Before we get started, we have three things that we need to do. The first thing that we need to do is put on our listening ears. The second thing that we need to do is find our thinking hats. Mine is right here in front of me. I'm going to put it on top of my head. And today my thinking hat has a zipper underneath my chin. So I'm going to zip it up. And the third and final thing that we need to do is warm up our hearts. Will you show me how to do that? Boom, 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 boom. Do you remember which body system is your heart? The circulatory system. Let's do a double check. Our listening ears are on, our thinking hats are on, and our hearts or our circulatory system is all warmed up. And now we can get started with circle time. Let me grab my pointing stick and first let's go over the date. We'll begin up here with the month. Do you know what the month is? July. That's right. Today is July 8th. Let's move the chip over from yesterday. Yesterday was July 7th and today is July 8th. And up here we have the year. You can say that the year is 2021, but you can also say that the year is 2021. Both ways are correct. Can I see your counting fingers like this? And let's warm them up to give them a little stretch. We are going to use our counting fingers and see how many days we've had so far in the month of July. Let's start at the top. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have had eight days so far in the month of July. Now it's time to sing the days of the week song. So hold up seven fingers like this. And if you know the words, you can sing along with me. There are seven days, there are seven days, there are seven days in a week. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Down at the bottom of the chart, that means that it's time to go over the days of the week. Listen carefully and hear the sound that the day starts with. And if you know what the day is, you can say it with me. Yesterday was w. Wednesday. That means that today is th. Thursday. And tomorrow will be th. Friday, the last day of the weekday. Let's sing today is Thursday together. Today is Thursday. Today is Thursday. Today is Thursday all day long. Today is Thursday, today is Thursday, today is Thursday, all day long. And let's travel back up to the top of the chart where we have the season. What's the season, friends? Summer. It's summertime where I live. And if we go back down, that means that it's time to sing the weather song together. What's the weather? What's the weather? Can you tell? Can you tell? Is the sun shining? Is the rain falling? 
Can you tell? Can you tell? My picture at the bottom of the chart hasn't changed all week. It's another mostly cloudy day. The sky is mostly full of white clouds, but I still see the sun poking out a little bit. Later today, it's supposed to start raining. But for now, the sun is still shining a little bit. And my temperature chart is on orange because it's warm outside. Warm and mostly cloudy with the sun shining a little bit. What about you, friends? What do you see outside of your window? Thanks for sharing the weather with me. Let's keep moving. Here we have the uppercase or capital letter of the week. What sound does this letter make? S, S. And which letter is this? S, you're right. This is a capital or uppercase S. S says S, S. I wonder what we'll find inside of the letter box today. It's something that starts with the letter S, S. Here's your first clue. This is a type of a boat. But this boat, instead of using a motor or an engine to run, it relies on the wind. Hmm, what could it be? Let's open it up and find out. A sailboat. So this boat is called a sailboat. This part right up here looks like a giant flag. It's called the sail, and the sail helps the boat move, and it uses the wind. Sailboat starts with the letter S. S. This is how you write in uppercase S. S. One more time. And here's the number of the week. What number is this? Six. That's right, friends. Will you show me your six fingers? Let me put my chalkboard down so that I can show you six of my fingers. I'm going to start with one hand. One hand has five. And when I add one more finger, now I have six. Six fingers. Let's count to the number six together using the large bead frame. This week, we are going to count to the number six using the large bead frame we are going to be counting the units, which are the green beads at the top. Let's count the number six together. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six units. Inside of the number box, I have something really cool to count today. I have some clover leaves. Now, clover is a type of a plant, and usually clovers have three leaves per plant. But sometimes, if you're really lucky, you may find a clover plant that has four leaves. I found one clover plant, it has three leaves. One, two, three. And the second clover plant also has three leaves. Let's count the total number of leaves together. One, two, three, four, five, six. Three leaves and three leaves make six leaves. Six clover leaves. Have you ever found a four leaf clover before? I have a while ago. And I saved it because a four leaf clover is supposed to be lucky. We've gone over the letter of the week and the number of the week. So now it's time to go over the sign of the week. Do you remember how to say person in sign language? Would you like to show me how? Let's do that together. Person. Person. Let's continue our discussion on the human body systems. We've learned about three of them, and we have two more to go this week. 
Here's your clue for today's body system. This part of your body may rumble and grumble when you feel hungry. Has that ever happened to you before? Where in your body did you feel that happen? Right here, inside of your stomach. Today, we are going to talk about the digestive system, which includes much more than just your stomach. Digestion actually begins to happen inside of your mouth as you produce saliva and chew your food. Next, the food travels down your throat, through your esophagus, and into your stomach. Inside of your stomach are acids, which break the food down even more before it enters the small intestine. The small intestine removes the nutrients from the food, which is then sent throughout the body. Next, the large intestine removes any water from the food, and finally, the waste will leave your body when you use the bathroom. This whole process takes a few hours. Who knew that digesting a meal could be so complicated? For today's work, we are going to take a closer look at how our bodies break down fats and oil. For today's work, you will need two glasses of warm water, a spoon, some cooking oil, and some liquid dish soap. Today, we are going to see how the fats or oils are broken down once they travel through our stomachs into our intestines. So I'm just going to take my cup of olive oil that I have in here and I'm going to add a few drops to each of the cups of water. A little bit more in this one. And as I can see, when I look closely, the yellow olive oil is just sitting right on top of the water, like a big glob. You can see right here. So as we eat fats and oils, it travels through our stomachs and into our intestines. And then once it reaches our intestines, a chemical or enzyme called a lipase is used to break down those fats and oils inside of our intestines. So I'm going to pour a few drops of the liquid dish detergent into the second glass right here. This is supposed to represent the lipase that are inside of our intestines. And the next thing that I'm going to do is give my second glass a mix and let it sit for a little while. Oh, so let's just compare what these two glasses look like now. In this first glass, you can see that the fat and oil is just still one big blob just sitting and floating inside of the water. But in this second jar, you can see that the fat, the oil has been broken down once I added the liquid dish soap, which is supposed to represent the lipase that are inside of our intestines. So the lipase broke down the oil and that's what happens inside of our bodies. Let's get back to circle time. Welcome back to Circle Time, friends. Did you know that as a body gets older, it gets harder for the digestive system to break down fats and oils? That may mean more stomach aches. Thanks for learning with me today. Don't forget to su subscribe to my channel. Please give my video a thumbs up and find me on OutSchool for my live and interactive summertime classes. You can also support my channel by checking out my Patreon page and gain access to bonus features for your child. Let's sing our goodbye song together. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. I'll see you next time. Have a wonderful day, everyone, and I'll see you tomorrow.